What if I told you that the best productivity app for your iPad and your Mac has been sitting on your device for months and you've never opened it? This is Apple Freeform, August's app of the month and the most overlooked productivity app from Apple. So what the heck is Freeform? Well, Apple says Freeform is a flexible canvas for organizing and visually laying out content, enabling users to see, share, and collaborate on various files. It allows for easy collaboration, including during FaceTime calls and syncs across devices via iCloud. It's free and has great Apple Pencil support, but kind of lacks the prestige of Apple Notes. Many people know you can jot down notes or make drawings in Apple Notes, but Freeform gives you an infinitely expandable canvas to really take those ideas into a visual scene. This flexible canvas lets you visually organize things in a way that Apple Notes does not. And if you're a visual person or you have a specific idea that you just need to flesh out in kind of a rough way, Freeform might be the app that you should be using instead of Apple Notes. In this video, I'll go through the features of Freeform, why you should use it over Apple Notes, and how I've used it in the past. Starting with the core features. Now, Freeform boards are obviously stored in iCloud, so you can get them on any device. And it works great on iPad with the Apple Pencil, but I've even found myself using it on the Mac as well. When I need a little bit more precision, if I'm trying to really link things together, having a mouse is very helpful on that front. The first and maybe the biggest is the infinite canvas. Now this expands as you add stuff to it. So if you hop in and you start a new board and you kind of scroll around, you know, you will find the edges of it. But as you add things to it, it gets bigger or smaller to fit what you have added. And just like everywhere else with the Apple Pencil, there are all the varieties of brush styles that you might want to use in order to draw. You have the crayon, you have just your regular pens, you have your highlighters, anything that you have with the Apple Pencil, you have it here in Freeform as well. You can also add different images, symbols, objects, basic. You can kind of just add shapes, resize them however you want. If you wanted to draw and connect it together, you have to have the right tool selected, but you can draw an arrow put another circle, connect things together in kind of a mind map sort of fashion. All of these different tools, the shapes, the sticky notes, the Apple Pencil support kind of gives you unlimited creativity to flesh out your ideas and draw on this infinite canvas. Now, Freeform also supports a variety of different file types. You can put photos in there. You can even link pages documents within the Apple ecosystem, PDFs, pictures, even audio files can go into the Freeform app. It has inline preview as well. So if you put a pages document into it, you can preview that document within the app without leaving Freeform. Or uh, like if you're on the Mac, you can open it directly in pages, then make your edits and they'll save back to the file that's linked to Apple Freeform. So that's kind of a neat feature. It's easy to align things in Apple Freeform. If you have a bunch of different shapes, it gives you um, these you know, snapping lines. You've seen these before in other programs, Canva, any other design software. You know, It's really easy to make sure you're putting stuff in the right spot in Freeform, or you know, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be snapped to the grid and aligned, but if that's how you want your picture to look, and you have specific things that you need to do within Freeform, it's easy to snap them to a grid. And you can lock content in place. So if I wanted to lock this PDF and then scribble on it, take some notes, maybe annotate, highlight some stuff in it that I wanted to remember without opening the document, that's how you use the lock feature. So that can be helpful in a big document. If you um, just want to jot some stuff down, you could make these a little bit bigger so you could read them easier, but you can kind of see how that would be beneficial if you're putting PDFs or different documents into the free format. And then something that was a recent addition was scenes. So here's something I came up with just the other day. I was trying to figure out, do I need a dock for my uh, desktop setup? So, you know, a uh, CalDigit uh, Thunderbolt dock has a bunch of ports and expandability. So 
I said, do I need a dock? Here's what I would plug into the dock. And I created scenes. Scenes uh, help you to organize large boards. Now, this isn't a large board, but you'll get the idea here. So I click on the dock, takes me directly to the dock. So I bought this and I subsequently returned it to Amazon after I kind of figured out, well, this was a, just a prime day impulse purchase and I didn't really need it. So I had a couple hard drives plugged into USB ports, computer, my drive that I edit on and the studio display taking up the Thunderbolt ports. And then when I go down to my computer, which is still the M2 Max, Mac Studio, I was kind of like, all right, I'll plug in the studio display, my editing SSD. That leaves two Thunderbolt ports open on the back. I can put my audio interface into the USB port. I have a time machine drive going to the USB port as well because it doesn't really need to be all that fast. And then I have the added benefit of having the studio display. So the studio display has three more USB-C ports on it. I have the Logitech Creative Console plugged in there. So if I plug in my MacBook Pro to that monitor, I have access to the console. I have a Samsung SSD uh, running in RAID 1. So I have two of those USB ports for those two drives. And then obviously the Thunderbolt port is going to the Mac Studio. So it was easy for me to kind of do this in Apple Freeform. I couldn't get my head around it, right? I've had this on my desk, wires everywhere, new setup trying to figure out, does this make any sense? And it was just something that I had to see visually in order for it to make sense. And the scenes feature made this really easy. So I made this whole graphic first with the port layouts that I have, turned it into a scene. You click this little button to open the scenes and you can add a new scene. So if I wanted to do the entire thing here, I could add a new scene. Then it has Scene three is the full thing. Doc, computer, scene three. So that's a pretty neat feature. That was added after launch of Freeform. Now, Freeform hasn't gotten a lot of updates over the few years that it's been out, but it's a, it's a pretty powerful app. And there are only a few alternatives that you would want to use for something like this. Now, I've shown you a little bit of the ways that I've used Freeform here as I went through the description of features, one of the main ones that I think is most interesting is video planning. So my last video for simplifying your to-do list, you know, the Apple Note is still kind of the hub of my entire um, system. So I have the Apple Note. It has all of the things that I'm going to talk about in the video, it has title options, it has a shot list. I have the thumbnail. I really wish you could link the Apple Note in Freeform. That's one of the biggest downsides right now is, yeah, it handles a lot of different file types, like I said, with images and audio and pages documents, but you can't link Apple Notes to Freeform, and you can't really easily link Freeform boards to Apple Notes. So I'd love for Freeform to kind of be like the rough, hey, I have an idea. I'm not sure what it needs to be yet. So I can sketch some things out, maybe do some thumbnail drawings, and then start the you know big structured Apple Note that has all of my different sections and all of the different automations that I use for my video template file. Now, if you're a filmmaker, there are tools out there like Milanote that do things where you can have storyboards, you can have different colors, you can have character sections, locations, audio, about the film. So I tried to recreate that a little bit in Apple Freeform about the film, characters, location, color, and then I kind of have a storyboard where you can go left to right and you could use the Apple Pencil to draw some characters. Here's me talking about Apple Freeform. So this is a free tool that could replace something that is paid out there, but you kind of have to do a little bit of the work yourself. Now, the benefit of that is you get to have some fun creating something that you can use yourself. It's free and it may end up working better for you than some tool that was designed by somebody else for their workflow. And project management could be an interesting use case for Apple Freeform as well. Of course, it's probably not going to replace a dedicated tool, something that has a burn up or a burn down chart if you work in the agile space or like Microsoft Project or, you know, classic tools that have milestones and connected activities together. But if you needed to do something quick, like a PowerPoint engineering type stuff, 
Uh, Apple Freeform might be good to put a plot a couple milestones on like a quarterly chart that your team needs to hit if that's something that you wanted to do. I know I would love to have this at work if uh, if I had an Apple device to use it with. And then we talked a lot about personal brainstorming. So as I come up with an idea or uh, work through different processes, sometimes I just need to see it visually. So here's kind of a YouTube IG idea generation thing that I made a while ago um, back when I was using Todoist. So where are my YouTube ideas going? Apple Notes, I was doing the part-time YouTuber Academy at the time. All those exercises were stored in Apple Notes. My video project files go into Apple Notes. So all of the things that I'm doing to work on the video, the scripts, the shot lists, the titles, the thumbnail ideas. And then I keep a lessons learned document, things like, hey, you didn't set your white balance right. Your audio was too low or you didn't even have the audio plugged into the right port on the camera. You know, all of the things that I've done and screwed up behind the scenes that nobody has really seen, I keep a file, so I try to not repeat those mistakes. And Todoist at the time was my task management, so I had random ideas, things that I might want to work on, projects in WIP, and then tasks related to filming and editing. And then the calendar was obviously used to schedule the time to do all that stuff, the writing, the filming, the B-roll. Not really anything has changed here other than I've replaced Todoist with Apple Reminders. Now collaboration is also another interesting aspect of Freeform. I'm obviously only one person here working on this team, so I'm not sharing these boards with anybody else, but you can share them with other people. They can collaborate directly on them. Uh, you can also export them as PDFs if you needed that. I've had that come in handy. I made a uh, things keyboard shortcuts board here when I was using Things 3 to remember all of the keyboard shortcuts for both iPad and Mac. And it was really helpful to have those as a PDF, something that I could quick reference and also then share with other people. So what needs improvement on this app? Well, I've already mentioned my gripes with Apple Notes and not being able to connect them to Freeform and vice versa. But in general, it's just the typical Apple nonsense. It's like a really good free app that just needs a little bit more polish in order to be perfect. It's kind of like they've forgotten that they have this ecosystem that used to be the selling point for all of their devices. Everything worked seamlessly together and it just seemed like magic when you did stuff like universal copy and paste, airdrop, or handoff between devices. And nowadays, the more that I use Apple apps, the more fragmented they are, the more frustrated I get. I'm starting to wonder if they do this on purpose though, because this opens the door for the Apple developer community to step in and make these third-party tools and create options for these niche use cases. You know, I know I'm not really the average Apple user and most people aren't using the Apple productivity apps in the manner that I am, but I feel like it's becoming more and more popular. Personal knowledge management has increased in popularity. People are starting to use Apple Notes. They have tools that they want to collect information in and link everything together. Notion's as big as it's ever been, and it has all of these tools built in. They've expanded recently to Mail and Calendar. So it just makes sense that Apple should take a step back and look at all of these applications from a holistic view. Does everything that we already make work together? No, it really doesn't. So maybe we should focus on that instead of overhauling the design of our system for no reason. So rant aside, where does that leave us with respect to Apple Freeform versus Apple Notes? And I think, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it comes down to the structure. So I treat Apple Notes like a highly structured app. I have a video template or I have a project or something that I'm working on. I have a bunch of different sections within the app, headers, subheaders, et cetera. It's very ABC, you know, nice outline, very well organized, and everything has a place. If you're working on an idea though, that you just need to kind of get things down, how does this connect together? I don't know. You know, I want to talk about Apple Freeform. Is it even worth talking about Apple Freeform? This video being in a board would have been really helpful for me to figure out. Instead, I just did the classic thing where I put it in an Apple note and structured it the way that I would do any other video. 
though I have found Freeform really helpful and I think it will have a great place in my workflow still for jotting down different process flows, trying to figure out how I can be more efficient and kind of working on the messy aspects of the project before it gets cleaned up and polished into something that would go into an Apple Note. So there you go. Another free Apple application is this month's app of the month. You can get it on your iPhone, iPad, or Mac as long as it supports iOS 16.2, iPad OS 16.2, or Mac OS Ventura 13.1. So plenty of devices out there that this supports. And you can go open it up now and get creating. Let me know in the comments how you're using Freeform in your workflow or if this is the first time you're even hearing about it. Get subscribed and stay tuned for the rest of the App of the Month series here in August. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Later. Later.